your value system, my value system, we're all going to pick a standard against which we, we judge more, uh, behavior morally. All of our laws, ultimately at their core, are going to be based on a moral um, uh, evaluation. What's, what's so, your view of abortion? I think that it's wrong. Under any circumstances? Under any circumstances. Even rape and I, incest? I think that, that someone who is ultimately willing to, to murder a child, even to fix another tragic and uh, devastating uh, situation, like rape or incest mm -hmm. or things like that, is uh, not taking the moral high road. I think that we're, we're, we're compounding the problem by also murdering a little child. But could you honestly look a daughter in the eye if she was raped and say, mm -hmm. you have got to have that child? And, yes, and I will you help would do you. That? Yes, wow. of course. I find that amazing that people would say that. Oh, but because I love, I love my daughter, I love that little child. This is a little creature made in God's image. Perhaps, you know, imagine if, that, if, you, were the, if you were the result of that and you had been aborted. We wouldn't be here having this conversation. And so uh, I value life above all things. I, I, I just simply do not support the idea of the United States of America being indivisible. Um, have you ever thought to think that uh, the word indivisible is actually incompatible with the word liberty? Um, the two cannot go hand in hand. They're actually, I mean, for all practical purposes, they are opposite. Um, and how can we be a um, country with uh, that 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 says that we have liberty, and yet we also say that we are indivisible? So uh, I do not support that idea. Also, the Pledge of Allegiance contains untruths regarding the U.S., um, including the statement, uh, with liberty and justice for all. Um, it's, it's quite clear, I believe, to everyone out there, um, at least any Christian, that in this country there is not liberty and justice for all, um, particularly for Christians. Uh, I believe it was uh, this past January, um, if you were up on the news at that time, uh, one of the uh, news personalities, uh, Britt Hume on Fox News, actually uh, had a small segment talking about uh, Tiger Woods. You remember that scandal that uh, with his wife and his uh, um, multiple affairs? Or... Tiger Woods will recover as a golfer. Whether he can recover as a person, I think, is a very open question, and, we're, and it's a tragic situation with him. I think he's lost his family. It's not clear to me that well, he'll be able to have a relationship with his children. But the, but the Tiger Woods that emerges once the news value dies out of this scandal, uh, the extent to which he can recover, it seems to me, depends on his faith. He's said to be a Buddhist. I don't think that faith offers the kind of forgiveness and redemption that is offered by the Christian faith. So my message to Tiger would be, Tiger, turn, your faith, turn to the Christian faith, and you can make a total recovery and be a great example to the world. And uh, and the, the, the world went absolutely crazy because he said this on the air. And they were absolutely, for all practical purposes, gnashing their teeth. They could not stand it. You go onto YouTube and you look up any of those, um, those video clips of Britt Hume saying that on Fox News Sunday. And th <laughs> there are some people on those YouTube videos that commented that are just blind with rage. And they just cannot stand the fact that uh, that he would talk about his faith. They call him some terrible names, and only because he talked about the Christian faith. Now, if Brit Hume had gotten up there and said that uh, the Buddhist faith doesn't offer the kind of uh, forgiveness that the Muslim faith offers, nobody would have said anything. They might have, you know, some Buddhists might have gotten a little mad. He might have found it in uh, some Buddhist newspaper, somebody getting mad about it. But there would have been absolutely nothing like the kind of media coverage and scandal that was spread after uh, after that incident. So it's pretty clear that Christians do not have uh, uh, freedoms in this country. Um, and it's just getting worse. John, what do you say to those who say, what about Chad and his, his love of his life being together? Isn't that better than, say, the, the heterosexual marriage where the, one of the partners cheats? Who is contributing more to the moral decay of the society? The adulterous husband with the female wife or the loving gay couple who don't do that? Yeah, well, you're asking me to do something I really can't do, and that is make a judgment on which sin is better or, or worse than the other. Um, we've suffered in this country from adultery, divorce, the abuse of children, pedophilia, you name it. 
I'm not going to classify those in rank. They're sins, and they destroy the family. And, and homosexuality is and homosexuality, a sin. Yeah. Therefore, uh, it's a choice. It's a choice you make. It's a sinful choice. Did you choice. make a choice to be heterosexual? I, I don't think I had to make a choice to what be heterosexual. Mean? I think that's a natural Wait thing. A Wait a minute. In other words, one is a choice and one is not. Yeah. So he was unlucky because, and you're lucky. Because you're not talking about... Because it's natural to be heterosexual. That's what do you built, mean by natural? Well, yeah. I mean, that's the way God made us. That's but the if normal. he doesn't feel that way, what is he then? He's not a sinner. It wasn't his decision. Yeah, I think it was his decision. I would love, absolutely love for the pastor to point out for me where, when in my life I made that decision. Because I have to tell you, it caused a lot of pain in my family. It caused a lot of pain to me. It's a very, very tough thing that I had to go through. I don't remember making that decision. If I did, maybe you can point it out, but that wasn't the case for me. I'll approach it's it who I way. am. You also said that, that it was in the fabric of the human being to, that, that to understand that marriage was between a man and a woman, and that's the way family was. It must not be because it's not in the fabric of who I am. It's not the way I see it. I think families come in all shapes, sizes, and colors. Well, uh, let me respond this, this way, Chad, and say it had to be in the fabric of humanity or you mm -hmm. wouldn't be here. I believe that reproduction is. I'll give you that. I absolutely believe that reproduction is. However, I think family, the definition of family and the definition of reproduction are very, very different right. things. Uh, well, what, we what I said earlier is the DNA, the genetic structure mm -hmm. of humanity, of civilization, of society, is family. Everybody knows that. That's in the heart. That's how it works. You're coming along with others who are homosexual in, in their perspective mm -hmm. and overturning what is natural to could everyone. They, could they be also be asking to the privilege of something you have preached for years. Marriage is a healthy, wonderful thing, and they're saying, let us in funk yeah, it. Why would you me, deny it to them? Let me respond to Chad, too, just Please. on a personal basis, sure. Chad, by saying, um, I, I don't think at some point you said, okay, I'm going to be a homosexual. I got two alternatives, you know, I'm going to go be a homosexual. But I do think whatever sin patterns show up in our lives, and they may be different for us, we can choose to continue down those paths of sin, whether it's adultery or whatever it is, mm -hmm. uh, or we can say, look, this is sin, and I need to deal with this in my heart. If this is the way I'm being led, it's not right, it doesn't honor God, it's not according to His Word, it's not going to ultimately bring blessing on my life. I make the choice at that point. I can't make a choice to be a sinner, okay? I am. We all are. But once you start down the path of sin, if you recognize that it is that, then you look to the Lord for the remedy to that. So I'm not going to speak or proclaim these untrue statements uh, um, that are said in the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, the United States of America is no longer a nation under God, if it ever was. And in my mind, there's actually some question of a doubt. But um, I'm not going to claim that it is a nation under God and in turn give a bad name to my faith and more seriously tarnish the reputation of my Lord to others. I'm going to say something. You're going to have to hold, a, hold on to your seat a little bit. I'm convinced, beyond doubt, that in the same sense, God has abandoned America. The first thing that you look for in a society, if you're trying to discern whether God has abandoned that society, is whether or not that society has gone through a sexual revolution so that illicit sex, adultery, every form of immorality is accepted as normal in that society. And we're there. So you follow a sexual revolution with a homosexual revolution. And homosexuality becomes normalized. And you look at this world and you say, rampant sexual immorality, out of control, destroying people willy-nilly, even in the church, even in the leadership of the church. Homosexuality, same thing, rampant, out of control, demanding to be accepted as normal, and the society rushing to affirm that acceptance. Gospel is no gospel because what it does is offer to people what they want as natural people. You don't have to be born again to want to be wealthy, and therefore you don't have to be converted to be saved by the prosperity gospel. When you appeal to people to come to Christ on the basis of what they already want, 1 Corinthians 2 makes no sense.
The natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit. They are foolishness to him. Therefore, if you offer to people what they do not consider foolishness in the natural man, you're not preaching the gospel. And the prosperity gospel offers to people what they desperately want as fallen people, gives it to them, and grows huge churches. And we export it to Africa and the Philippines, flying in with our jets, bilking of their money, and going back to our condos worth $3 million. It is horrific what we export as Americans. I can't believe what we tolerate in the church. So I'm on a crusade to crucify the prosperity gospel. I hate the prosperity gospel. Because, hey, I mean, if I was seeking, the, if I, Ben Ditchell, was seeking the approval of man, number one, I wouldn't be saying this, but this is going to make a lot of people mad. And number two, I just, you know, pledge allegiance to the flag and make everybody feel happy and it'd be never a problem. But I can't do that because we as Christians need to have Christian consciences that are biblical consciences, not mainstream Christianity consciences because we are grown up or most of us grow up in Christian schools or public schools where we say the Pledge of Allegiance and we go and vote and told to vote and so on and we never think outside the box. We never think, oh, actually maybe we should question this against what the Bible has to say and nine times out of ten the Bible says something that is clearly different. So uh, if we seek the approval of man, sure, we'll go along with all of that. But, um, but if we don't try and please man, if we... Uh, try and please God and be a servant of Christ. We're not going to please man, but we're going to ultimately win the prize, which is uh, receiving the gift of eternal life. And uh, I'm not saying that saying the Pledge of Allegiance will send you into hell, but I am saying that maybe next time you should think just a little bit what exactly you're saying, what you're pledging allegiance to, and if you really mean it. So there was an event here at Dodger Stadium with Joel Osteen. 35,000 people at Dodger Stadium, something like that. Um, he is now the largest quote-unquote church, uh, I'm using the word loosely, in America, down in Houston. Um, you need to understand that he is a pagan religionist in every sense. Now, what is the source of this? Where does this come from? Answer, Satan. This is satanic. This is satanic. This is not just off-center. This is satanic. Why do I say that? Because health, wealth, prosperity, the fulfillment of all your dreams and your desires, that's what Satan always offers. That's called temptation based on the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That's exactly what corrupt, fallen, unregenerate people want. That's why it works so well, right? You can go right into Satan's system, make everybody feel religious, and turn a, their desires, their temptations into somehow honorable desires. Virtually all English translations ignore the fact that doulos only means slave and translated servant. There had been a conspiracy to cover up a truth that is so essential to the New Testament that without it, we misunderstand our relationship to Jesus Christ. A servant does a job, a slave his own. When you understand the concept of the Christian as a slave, then you understand what it means to be bought out of the slave market of sin. As believers, we are slaves who become friends Friends who become sons, sons who become joint heirs, just changes everything that I perceive about the Christian life. To sum it up, really, it's, it's a form of idolatry to salute a flag, to swear our devotion to a flag. Uh, in James 5, verse 12, uh, it says, But above all, my brothers, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or by any other oath. Um, I would definitely say that the Pledge of Allegiance is an oath. You know, I pledge allegiance to the flag and to the public for which it stands. Um, that is an oath. There's no two ways about it.